you have to take chances in life. You know, if you want your life to be something special, you eventually have to take a chance. You can't do normal things and expect extraordinary results. It doesn't work that way. You have to take an exceptional chance one time. And it's going to cost you something that you care deeply about. Bishop Jakes told me one time, he said, in order to get to the next level in life, you can see where you want to go, but it's a glass ceiling. The reason you can see it is because it's a glass ceiling. In order to break through a glass ceiling, you're going to have to shatter the glass. Anytime you shatter the glass, it's going to be bloodshed. And the blood that you shed is going to be something that you care deeply about. So if you are not willing to shed something you care deeply about, you cannot go to the next level. There's a black heritage spiritual that says it's not my mother nor my father nor my brother nor my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. See, I used to blame everything outside. And then let me give you a little philosophy that helped turn my life around. For your notes, here it is. It's not what happens that determines the quality or the quantity of your life. It's not what happens. And the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody. No different. The sun went down on all of us last night. A common event, a happening. And I found out that the same things can happen to two different people. One gets rich and one stays poor. Why is that? It's because it's not what happens, but rather it's what you do that changes everything. So that's a key phrase. It's not what happens, it's what you do. What happens is about the same. You might put that in parentheses here. Same. What people do, that's what's different. Anything can happen, right? Everything can happen. I've heard all the stories. I've been one of the stories. Hey, we could all tell stories all night long, right? Happenings. Anything can happen. Have you heard of Murphy's Laws? Anybody here heard of Murphy's Laws? Okay, most of you have. Murph had these laws. One of them was, if anything can go wrong, it will. That's one of Murphy's laws. He was not one of the great positive speakers of the day. But anyway, it's still true though, right? Anything can go wrong, everything can go wrong. For sure. I've fallen out of the sky so many times. Once to the tune of a couple of million. Devastating. Took me a while to survive that one. Now, it wasn't all that much, but it was all I had. <laughs> I mean, that's when it's much, right? When it's all you got. If you got three, two go, you got one left. You ain't looking that bad. But when it all goes, has anybody been there when it all went? Anybody? Come on, the rest of you liars. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, we've all been there, right? When it all went. Of course, it used to be a long time ago, right? When you ran out of money, got to zero, you were all through. Heck, now you can whistle right on by zero, right? I mean... <laughs> They will bury you. That's what they will do. But see, those are the happenings, right? Everything can happen. Anything can happen. But it's not the happenings. It's what you do about it. Somebody says, yeah, but you don't understand the disappointments I've had. Come on. Everybody's had their share. Disappointments are not special gifts reserved for the poor. Everybody has them. The difference is what you do about it. It's not the weather. I used to blame the weather and I discovered it rains on the rich. So see, that won't help. Two men wake up one morning, there's a rainstorm on. One of them looks out his window, sees the rainstorm, and he says, wow, what a storm. With weather like this, they can't expect you to go out and make sales. He stays home. Same morning, the other guy looks out his window, sees the same storm, says, wow, what a storm. But he says, you know what, with weather like this, what a great day to go out and make sales. Most everybody will probably be home especially the sales. See, that's the difference in how your life works out. It's not what happens, it's what you do. So here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you gonna do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? See, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's gonna be the same. And see, that way you can guess what the next five years are gonna be like. Look at the last five because the next five are going to be like the last five unless you major key tomorrow change it all or change a little or change something or don't change it's choice time you can do whatever you want but it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life what can you do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference good question what can you do with economic chaos massive disappointment what can you do with a broken heart what can you do and it won't work good question so if i had a word with you tonight one-on-one -on -one, just you and me i think my personal advice to you would be 
This year, 1981, reach down inside of you and come up with some more of those remarkable human gifts. They're there, waiting to be utilized. And then change anything for you you want to change. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. If it doesn't please you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same again after tonight, only by choice. If you don't like your present address, change it. You're not a tree. Bigger Thomas in the book on the Invisible Man, I think it was, he said, the impulse to dream has been slowly beaten out of me through the experience of life. And most people, ladies and gentlemen, have stopped living their dreams because of the lessons they've learned from life or things they've picked up because we've only been born with two fears. The fear of a loud sound or the fear of falling. And all the other fears are fears we learn, fears we pick up. Whatever you're scared of, no life, the value you brought to the planet, far more important than whatever you're afraid of. You're stronger. So as we begin to look toward the future and look at what will it take for us to break through those fears, one, acknowledging the fear, knowing it's all right, some fear is healthy. Beginning to know that your dreams, your passions, your drive to achieve whatever it is you want, as it has more power and meaning, it will move you past your fears. As you begin to feel that you deserve it, your passion and goal is so strong, the fears won't matter. As you begin to trust yourself and put yourself in the situation where you have to make it happen, you will make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe this. I know this from my own life experience. I know that you've got greatness within you. I know that you have unlimited potential in you. I know that you have something to give to the universe that was not here before you showed up. Somebody said that life is God's gift to us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. What kind of gift are you giving? And what kind of gift could you give if fear wasn't an issue? And I'm saying, you can have fears, but don't surrender. Don't let your fears have you. You're more than capable of making this your decade. I think there is a wonderful metaphor for this that I have created in my life for how to make this work. And I think that Regis Philbin is the one who's responsible for it. All right, my buddy Regis. There's a show called uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire that has been popular all over the world. I'm in South Africa, it comes on. All right, I was in Australia and they've got their own Australian version. Um, and in Greece, they have the Greek edition of uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And basically this show has two levels that you have to get to. Now the first level, is the $1,000 level. And at the $1,000 level, you basically have to answer a question like, on your hand, you have some digits. Those digits on your hand are called your feet, your nose, your ears, your fingers. Uh, and everybody, whoever goes on the show, has this horrible dread that they're gonna go out on one of those questions, <laughs> right? So basically, in order to get to the $1,000 level, all you have to do is answer five pretty simple, simple questions in order to, uh, to get to the $1,000 level. Now, on this program, the $1,000 level for you in this metaphor means that you will leave with something if you get this. At least get this. This is the $1,000 level. You must send blame out of your life for any conditions of your life. Blame has to go. All right. Now blame means if you're sitting there with a disease, you say without guilt, it's mine, I take responsibility for it. This means that if you have been through any tough circumstances in your life, this means if you have a minimal amount of uh, financial security in your life. This means if your children don't uh, get along with you, 
This means that uh, if your neighbors are having taking up a petition to get you out of the neighborhood, whatever it might be that's going on in your life, you name it, and everybody across the, this great country and across this world has a series of these things that you're willing to say, I am here because of the choices that I have made right now. I'm willing to say that. Even though it's difficult, and we know it's really not your fault. We know really there's a lot of people out there who are really bad, all right? But, but you're willing to say no blame. That's the first level, all right? That's where you understand no justified resentment. And then on the uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire show, there is what is called the $32,000 level. And the $32,000 level is not only an opportunity for you to walk away with a sizable amount of goodies, which you can walk away from tonight in this program. But it also is the door opener to multi-wealth. But you got to get to this in order to have an opportunity to move into these transcendent levels. All right? Millionaire spiritual uh, status. All right? You got to get through these next five questions. And this $32,000 question, or level rather, comes to this. It came to me from a quotation that I used in the writing of a spiritual solution to every problem. I read the, uh, a book that was written a couple of thousand years ago by Patanjali, the Yoga Sutras, the aphorisms of Patanjali. And one of those sutras, one of those aphorisms, observations that this brilliant man made almost 2,000 years ago was this. He said, if you become steadfast in your abstentions of thoughts of harm directed towards others, all living creatures will cease to feel enmity in your presence. Now this translates to blame, pretty basic, no more blame. I'm just not going to assign responsibility to other people for where I am because now I have an opportunity to get rid of it. If I think someone else caused it, then I've got to wait for somebody else to change in order for me to get rid of it, and you might wait forever for that. But if I take responsibility for it, I can do something, including move on, which might be the most important thing to do. But at the higher level, when there are no justified resentments, what you are doing is what St. Francis did, Francesco. What you are doing is you are at a place where you are sending love in response to hate. You are literally saying, no matter what comes my way, I am going to be steadfast in my abstention of thoughts of harm directed toward others. I'm going to work hard at no matter what comes my way, having it come out of me what I want to come out of me and that is love and that is a higher energy and if you can get to that level Patanjali said all living creatures will cease to feel enmity in your presence I have a little girl a precious little girl I have six precious girls and two precious sons but I have a, uh, a little girl who is almost 12 and she loves animals like no one I've ever met in my life I mean her whole life revolves around animals and when we walk in the woods, butterflies avoid me, fly away from people around, and they come and they land right on her arm, and it happens all the time. All living creatures, she couldn't have a thought of harm directed towards any living creature. And Patanjali said to us, all living creatures will cease to feel fear or enmity or anger in the presence of those who can send love in response to hate. That's what I mean when I say there are no justified resentments.